Hello and welcome to Livewise Buy, Hold, Sell. I'm Ali Selby and today we're on a mission to find out if small cap investors are in for an early Christmas present this year in the form of a Santa rally. And to do that, we're joined by Simon Conn from IML and Eleanor Swanson from Firetrail. We've just seen a lower than expected inflation print from the Australian Bureau of Statistics. What does that mean for small cap investors? Could we see a Santa rally into the new year? Simon, starting with you. Yeah, Ali, like possibly. I mean, we've had a couple of good months, to be fair, as, um, you know, a couple of years, months ago, it was inflation and interest rates leading the day. US bond rates peaked at five. And as those bond rates have come back, we've seen a bit more strength in the market. But I think to see sustained rally, we probably need to more see, you know, more sustained lower inflation. And I think the trouble with the domestic inflation numbers is that domestically non-traded inflation is still quite high. So, you know, we're cautious that interest rates may have to go back a bit more. OK, over to you, Eleanor. What's your outlook on small caps over the next 12 to 24 months? Yeah, so we're very positive on the small cap market looking out 12 months. The way we're thinking about it, if you look at the last two years, the ASX 100 has outperformed the Small Lords Index by 20%. And what we tend to see, you know, when economies trough is the small cap market does rebound harder than the large cap market. So we think, you know, soft inflation print, you know, is a good sign that the worst is behind us. And so we think it is just time to start allocating to small caps. They look pretty attractive on a PE relative basis to the large cap index and they look like they've got more growth. So 13% EPS CAGR versus the large cap index at about a 2% CAGR over the next three years. Okay. I want to know one reason why small caps could rally into the new year and why one reason why they couldn't. Yeah, so I guess what we're kind of focused on at the moment, just given Black Friday, Cyber Monday have recently finished, you know, we're looking at some of the consumer trading updates. We are hearing that Black Friday did do particularly well, but we do caution that what we've seen over the last five years is that retail sales do continue to get pulled forward into November. And what that means is you do see a bigger dip into December. So, you know, potentially if what we've seen in November is sustained into December, it'll be a really good end to the year for kind of consumer, more cyclical style stocks. However, we are just a little bit cautious cautious that perhaps that is a little bit of a furphy given, you know, that pull forward we're seeing as a trend over the last five years. Over to you, Simon. What's your reason why small caps could rally into the new year and what's re one reason why they won't? Yeah, look, I think it's it really gets back to inf interest rates, you know, and the outlook for inflation. We think the RBA is a bit behind the curve and I'm cautious in terms of some of the margins that retailers are making. So I think that's one sector to be cautious of. I think it's really about being stock pickers. You know, we've had a reasonable um, bounce in our funds and I think it's really about going forward is positioning yourself in businesses that can sustain or build their margins in an environment where costs are still creeping up. Um, but, you know, I agree with, with Eleanor, you know, there's good valuation support in the small caps. Just need to get confidence around the domestic economy and the ability to continue to grow your earnings. Where are you seeing businesses that can sustain their margins? Which sectors are you finding the most attractive? Well, one sector that's been really beaten up is the healthcare sector. So, you know, companies like Integral Diagnostics and, um, and ACL, the two companies that we own. And, and we think, you know, in the healthcare sector, um, as things normalise post-COVID, they can, they're getting good revenue growth if they can manage their costs well. Uh, you know, we think they can see um, good earnings growth from here. And yeah, things like Kelsium, which have got you know, more inflation indexed um, earnings, we think are quite well positioned. What sectors are you liking if we see a rally situation from here? Yeah, if we see a rally, I think, you know, you'll see beaten up cyclicals do pretty well. So something, you know, like a, a housing building products, CSR, for example, or, you know, some of the retailers like a Premier Investments or a Nick Scarly should do really well. Also, some of the banks have been pretty beaten up. So that's kind of where we, we see the potential for outperformance, you know, hopefully if the economy has stabilised. How about on the other side of that, which sectors could really suffer? Uh, I guess some of the, the more kind of defensive names, you know, something like the supermarkets, um, you know, something that's, you know, a, a little bit more on, on the healthcare side, although on, in the small cap index, healthcare names have been beaten up. However, typically they should be more defensive. So just on a relative basis, those sectors should underperform in, in a strong market. Okay. What about you? What would you be avoiding in a, in a rebound situation? Yeah, look, I think we're just quite cautious on the consumer. So, you know, some of the retailers, I mean, their margins have really stepped up over this COVID period. And you know, um, we, we're very cautious in terms of being able to sustain those those, um, those margins, particularly with the cost pressures we're seeing in the domestic economy. So, you know, wages are growing quite strongly. Electricity was a big surprise in that CPI print today. So a lot of domestic inflation and the ability to maintain margins is is going to be tough, I think, for particularly for the cyclically exposed sectors. OK, this is meant to be a Christmas special. So we've asked you to bring along three stocks that you would be adding to your Christmas stocking as we head into the new year. Yes. What have you brought for us today? Yes, yeah, so look, I sort of touched on one before, the Australian Clinical Labs, we think, you know, is really well positioned. Um, pathology is a, you know, it's a pretty robust, re repeatable business. Stock's on 13 times, it's got a good balance sheet. Um, and they've proved that through COVID, their ability with their technology platform to flex costs as, as volumes have moved. So we, we quite like that one. SG Fleet, you know, it's a fleet leasing business. 
plays also in the novated lease space. You know, it's on about nine to 10 times. It looks very cheap. And I think it's a business and a sector that it's got sort of reasonable contracted revenue. And, you know, I think you know, with the lease plan synergies coming through, can continue to grow earnings. Um, and Kelsian is the third, which we, we really like. I mean, they recently did an investor day. Um, they've got their bus business, which is effectively uh, an inflation protected or in linked business. There's no fare box risk. And the US acquisition is going really well. So on 16, 15 times, it looks reasonably priced. Okay, over to you, Eleanor. What stocks are you adding to your Christmas stocking at the end of 2023? All right, Ali, I'm going to give you one defensive name and I'm going to give you two cyclical names. So the defensive one is Regis, which is an aged care player. They've got 70 homes across Australia. And the reason we like this one heading into next year is we're expecting an update from the aged care task force around putting some proposals to government about how to improve industry profitability. That's not factored into consensus earnings. So we think there could be some significant upside there if, if those proposals are positive. The second one is Premier Investments. So whilst, yes, the consumer backdrop is tough at the moment, there's lots of things to like about Premier. So firstly, it's got 400 mil of cash on the balance sheet, which they can either deploy into buybacks, special dividends, or even some M&A. And then in addition, they're undertaking a strategic review at the moment, hoping to get an update at their first half result, but certainly by the middle of next year. And they're looking to unlock some value in some of those more growthy brands like Peter Alexander, Smeagol, which potentially they could accelerate the offshore rollout of those, um, those stores. The final one that I've got for you uh, is Life360. So it's a technology company. It's a B2C business. It does a family safety and tracking. So they've also got some out on insurance products in the, the application. The reason we like that one is heading into next year, what we're seeing is that the international subscriber ads are really starting to accelerate and they're pushing very hard into Canada and the UK. At the same time, they're very much controlling the cost base. So we're expecting that, you know, at their March update um, next year, they should deliver another earnings beat. And it's just a really nice setup moving into next year. So there, there are three favourites um, heading into Christmas. What stock would you be adding to your naughty list? Okay, so we think Helios is still going to be on the naughty list heading into next year. So Helios is a pathology player. They recently raised about 200 mil of equity and they've also updated their earnings guidance. Now, what we're seeing in terms of their earnings guidance for FY24 is a very large second half skew. So they're assuming 85% skew to the second half, much larger than normal. So we don't think they've given themselves terribly much headroom in terms of you know potentially missing on the earnings front. And what that means is that they could be pushing up against some of their debt covenants, which is set at about four times net debt to EBITDA. So we still see some balance sheet risk in Helios despite that very large dilutive capital raise. So we're avoiding that one into next year. Okay. What would you be adding to your naughty list in 2024, Simon? Yeah, I've got to disagree with it. Um, with it you know, with Premier Investments is one that we're really quite cautious of. Like you mentioned in all the consumer stocks. If you look at their EBIT margins, they've really stepped up um, from 2019 to 2023. And, you know, a lot of these companies look like they're still over-earning and particularly Premier. I just don't think the brands, Just Jeans, Pot Dotty, JJ's, you know, are great businesses. And if you look at the sales per store, it's actually really stepped up. Um, and they've been able to you know, get good cost leverage. But I think as the consumer faces more headwinds, that could unwind and you know, it, it could potentially look quite expensive. Okay, well, that episode certainly proved that someone's trash could be someone else's treasure. I hope you enjoyed that episode as much as I did. If you did, why not give it a like? Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're adding so much great content just like this every single week.